Well, as these fans enter Lloyd Noble Center, we welcome you to Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Always a spirited matchup between 15th ranked Oklahoma and the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts University. Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Brendan Manzer. Both these teams on a high right now. OU's won four in a row, and ORU two in a row. Yeah, ORU three games in four nights. Good news. They've won their first two. Not so good news. They're on the road against an Oklahoma team that Dave has one of the better starting fives in all of America. Yeah, they certainly do. Obi Megano is a kid from Oklahoma who is really a great scorer. You said it. I mean, he's a scorer. Got great mid-range game. He's a physical, strong 6'3 perimeter player. Understands angles at getting the basket. Gets to the foul line, Dave, nine times per ball game. Oklahoma's going to have to be ready to contend with him out on the perimeter. So let's see who joins him in the starting five for Oral Roberts. It's Aaron Young, a teammate of his in high school. Billberry, another scorer, Conley and Henderson up front. Woodard Cousins, Thomas Spangler are four of the starting five for Oklahoma. The other we want to talk about, that's Buddy Heald, because he's been struggling from the outside. Yeah, he might be struggling a bit, only shooting 36% from the floor, Dave. But I promise you, every scatter report in pre preparation for him is worried about that game. He's going to get going once again and go off tonight. Maybe the night he's explosive in transition, terrific downhill. And Jordan Woodard always trying to find him for those transition threes. If anyone is going to work themselves out of a slump, it would be Buddy Heald. No one works harder than this kid. Tremendous work ethic. He's always had that work ethic, but when things aren't going well, what you love about him is he's going to get into the gym that much more. So we're all set to tip. It's Oklahoma in their home white. They've got the ball first. Doug Sermons, Jerry Pollard, David Hall, veteran crew from the Big 12 Conference officiating tonight's game. There's Tayshawn Thomas, transfer from Houston, coming off a big game against Tulsa, his biggest in a Sooner uniform. Yeah, 25 points Saturday on the road against their in-state rival. Dave on just 9 of 12 shooting. And if you watch Oklahoma, more emphasis here the last couple of weeks to get touches to he and Spangler inside. Shot from the outside, no good. Woodard's got the long rebound. Bounce pass. Cousins. That won't go. Good hustle, though, by Spangler. Bodies on the floor, and here comes Billberry. Scoop shot that goes up and in. What great effort right there from Aaron Young. One of the things Scott Sutton though is concerned about is transition defense. Well, he said that to us earlier today, and you cannot celebrate makes when you play Oklahoma. They're going to advance the ball off the floor quickly. Right there, you see they do it with the pass. What a job Scott Sutton has done in his 16 years at ORU. And a whistle and a foul inside. That's an illegal screen by Billberry. You, know, you see Scott Sutton, of course, comes from a great coaching tree. His dad, Eddie, a Hall of Famer, and Scott probably well on his way, all closing in on 300 wins at ORU. And he, Dave, to be honest with you, could have many more wins than that, but they choose every year in their non-conference to play a very difficult schedule. Spangler with a fresh haircut. <laughs> Better or worse, Dave? I like it. I like the clean cut look. And there's Heal. Sometimes it's a shot like that that can get you going even from the outside. And what I like about it is his willingness right here to drive the basketball. He's terrific, slasher, athletic, got some length. Sometimes, in my opinion, settles for the long range shot a little too much. Over half his shots come from three point range. So I like the fact that he put it on the deck. I think that was by design for Heal because he was two, 11, two for 11 against Tulsa from three point range and only four for 17 overall in that game. But he gets a quick three pointer here and OU leads by that many. And Oklahoma will work Oral Roberts up the floor all night. They're going to try to pressure the guards of the Golden Eagles. Again, three games and four nights. You would think that maybe legs might be a factor, particularly in the second half. From the short corner, blocked by Spangler. What a play, and he got it himself. What a dish. Cousins with a terrific pass inside. A great job right there, sharing the basketball. 
which you have the very good perimeter of Oklahoma, but you also have guys in Spangler and Thomas, Dave, that are skillful passers in their own right. Bilberry loses the handle. Goes into the corner, though. Spangler tips it out. Henderson now facing a double team. Boy, the pressure by OU's defense. They've improved defensively. There's no question that Oklahoma is further along on the defensive end than they were last year at this point. Megano picks the pocket of his high school mate. And a great dish inside from Bilberry to Henderson. Oral Roberts taking advantage of their own forcing turnovers. Mention of Megano, Bilberry also a physical guard out on the perimeter. Good touch pass as Henderson, the big fella running the floor well right there. Cousins, a rare miss for him. He has been on fire. Yeah, shooting it well. Eight of 11 from three point range the last two ball games against Missouri and then at Tulsa on Saturday. I love Dave, his progression as a player. Freshman, sophomore, now a junior. Really does a good job of letting the game come to him and, and playing off of Buddy Heald out there on the perimeter. The coach of the Sooners is Lon Kruger. He's been everywhere, but he's been successful everywhere he has gone. 543 wins in his hip pocket. 64 of those coming here at Oklahoma in his fourth year. Interesting matchup. They have a Megano guarding or guarded by Woodard. Spangler clears yet another rebound. Spangler pulls up. What a rebound by Thomas as he's falling almost onto his heels. And that is the luxury you know that Spangler, tremendous rebounder in his own right. But now you have Thomas there inside to help carry the load on the glass. For the penetration by Woodard and then an easy two for Thomas. Another turnover for ORU. Well, they get it back, and then they turn it over. Yeah, just a sloppy start. Not what you want if you're Scott Sutton here on the road. A little handoff to Spangler he couldn't handle. Water. Thomas just saying to make sure he doesn't get clobbered. Well, as you mentioned, Dave, the, the, the pressure, the intensity level that Oklahoma is bringing at the start here, obviously bothering ORU. And again, you, you can't discount the fact that this is three games and four nights, played a very good New Mexico State team on Saturday, which they won, and then beat Missouri State last night in Tulsa. We were talking to Scott Sutton about that. He said, I'm not using that as an excuse. We played a tournament earlier this year where we played a night game. We played the next day. We played really well the next day. Not playing well right now, though. Thomas is having his way. Well, you see the skill level right there. Good face up from Thomas. Tayshawn Thomas, the transfer from Houston. Great news for the Sooners when he was declared eligible. Prior a night the night before the, the, night the before. first basketball game. Yeah, you talk about opening up a big time holiday present the day before the season, huh? Well, they were already going to be a good basketball team with what they had returning, but uh, he affects them in a positive way on multiple levels. Brandon Conley finally gets something going for the Golden Eagles. Thomas. Count that and one. Wow, what a start for Tayshawn Thomas and for these Sooners. Already up 15 to 6. How about the start for Tayshawn Thomas? Yeah, can't get any better than this, Dave. 10 points, 10 straight points for the Oklahoma Sooners on 5 of 6 shooting. Of course, when you get easy bunnies in transition, that helps. But Good face up right here. No rotation defensively, and he's able to get the flush. But playing off of his 25 points in Tulsa on uh, Saturday, where he was 9 of 12 from the floor, you throw a little 5 for 6, and 
Nice little 78% from the floor what's combined he, the last two what's games. What's he have against the city of Tulsa? <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> well, he, he obviously provides them some more offensive punch. There's been more emphasis the last couple weeks to get him touches in practice, he and Spangler. But you said it as we came back from break. Maybe the most excited person to have him on the team is Ryan Spang. Absolutely. Nice step back by Jabbar Singleton. Good shot there from Singleton. Paul Roberts needs a little shot in the arm, but this is where they're going to have to get better is in the half court defensive. Walker's got it. He gives it up. That's Latin. His shot's wild. No good. And rebounded by Word. Singleton hands it back to Ward. He's been playing a lot more. In fact, he was the leading scorer the other day. Although a handoff pass here, easily stolen by Isaiah Cousins. What great timing right there from Cousins, Dave. And this is one of the things that I like about Oklahoma. Much better defensively. They're pressuring the ball more. And when you do that, it provides those wings like Cousins and Heel that have that length and athleticism to run through passes. And that was just an easy one for Cousins. You know, the offense isn't clicking on all cylinders for OU, not yet anyway. Look at Thomas weave through traffic, but then a charge. The defense much better for OU this year. Well, here's the run through. See the pressure on the ball? And just a lazy pass there, but a good run through. That's a gift and an easy one. You mentioned, Dave, Isaiah Cousin. He has been the most consistent perimeter player for Lon Kruger as of late. Yeah, averaging 13 a game. And, you know, this uh, gives Lon Kruger a chance to rest Tayshawn Thomas a little bit after that charge. I was talking to Coach Kruger today, so positive, so upbeat, you know, in practice and everything. And I said, you played for Jack Hartman, who wasn't necessarily <laughs> that. And he said, you know, yeah, it was tough love with Coach Hartman, but I learned so much. And he said, the way I was brought up by my dad, it was more positive reinforcement, and that's the way I decided to be as a coach. Well, he, he is positive. Never gets too high, certainly when things are going well. Never is too low. But I tell you one thing, there is great intensity in their practices. Yesterday, as I watched them, all the guys focused and locked in. Six turnovers now for the Golden Eagles. More holiday hoops brought to you by K Jewelers when we return to Norman in a moment. between UConn and Duke and the Blue Devils are title contenders. You never can count out the Huskies. They're the defending national champs. UConn and number two ranked Duke, the journey to the tourney presented by Sonic, all part of the Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. It's Thursday at 8 on ESPN, the home court of College Hoops. You know, every time those two teams have met in the NCAA, whoever wins that game goes on to win the national championship. Probably want to talk to uh, Coach K, Kevin Ollie. You want to get that uh, bracketed, do you not? Each and every year. Yeah. That's the case. But how good has Duke looked, <laughs> Dave? Oh man. See Even it. last night when their Coach K wasn't real happy against Elon, <laughs> yeah. they still look really good. You saw in the uh, graphic there, we have trailed for a little over four minutes and change all year. And I, I think. Part of that number one, they've got great talent, great coaching, but I think they're better defensively than they've been in the last couple of years. You know, Oklahoma here up 10 already. All of their points coming into the in the paint. That's one of the new emphasis for Coach Kruger this year with this bigger lineup he's got. That goes off Spangler. It'll stay with ORU. And if you'll notice in this game right here, every time Bill Berry or a Megano catches it on the perimeter, obviously who's guarding them has to be playing at a high level but you look at the other eight eyes the other four bodies for Oklahoma shading that direction to help on those two good guards for more Roberts whistle and a fight for the rebound the foul here will be on Dinjel Walker big story on Walker in the 
papers here locally today and talking about how he's having to make the adjustment from junior college. He was a star at Iowa Western Community College. He was a scorer there and now he's more of a role player here. Totally can relate to that Dave. when I went to Oklahoma State junior Juco guy that got to shoot at every possession I wanted right got to Oklahoma State. It was just better talent there and basically became a combo guard that under had to understand my role. It took me a semester. To I'll, I'll bet figure out what number one coach Sutton wanted me to do and number two uh, just to adjust to the level of play but Walker they like his tenacity they, they love that he's fearless Booker's three no good that's the first real outside shot by the Sooners well, that's what Booker does I mean you've got to mm -hmm. spot up to where he is Somebody forgot all about Bill Berry and he snuck into the basket. But there they come right down to the other end as Henderson swats it away. We just talked about how all eyes off the ball are on Bill Berry, but not here. Booker, this lack of communication right there. Bill Berry wide open, but along with Omegano, these two are. Scott Sutton's offense at this point and they just try to get them in situations where those guys can score they're terrific at going to the foul line and manufacturing points that way Latin gives it up Woodard Woodard now playing alongside Dingell Walker Latin good rebound by Megano Three point shot off the heel, no good by Weber. And a foul going for the rebound. This one will be on Kadeem Latin. With the slow start of Oral Roberts can string a series of good possessions, Dave, at both ends. They're obviously with arms, and arms linked right now, but they're right back into it. Von Kruger, I, once he went to his bench, I think it was, was obvious that the defensive intensity has pulled back a little bit. Now he's gone back to that starting unit along with uh, Walker. Working hard to get that ball to Omegano. And he is drawing a lot of attention. Good swing pass. And that one rattles home for Word. Word. So six straight by ORU. Man, Word is a guy that. Just one of those guys that he hits a shot or two, you have to be careful with him because he can score in bunches. Heel spots up. Just a little bit shy. Well, he was at the gym at 6 o'clock yesterday morning working on that shot. Good rebound and ahead of the field, heel. That's an easy one, Dave. And right there, simply, if you're the weak side guard on the perimeter, it is your responsibility to get back for defensive balance. And that's what Scott Sutton is upset with right now. Omegano on the layup by word was here on the weak side and just stood. You've got to get back, particularly against a team like Oklahoma, who's so quick in transition. They were working on it earlier today, saying, we've got to get maybe one, two, three guys back. Look at the ball movement here, though, to get word free. Omegano, a good job of getting the ball out of the double team. And they got lucky there, but you can't stand and leave a 6 3 guard who's posting up and getting double teamed by greater size. You have to relocate to give him a pass, go screen a teammate and flop and get back open. And then you see his brother, Sean Sutton, former coach at Oklahoma State, your alma mater, where, of course, his dad coached. I was talking to Scott earlier today about being at Oral Roberts for 16 years and he said I've had a few looks at some other places but I just feel so comfortable in Tulsa at Oral Roberts they've treated me well and he said I've never been one to believe that you know there, there are greener pastures somewhere else and he said I'm real happy where I'm at doesn't mean I'll stay forever and ever but he said right now I'm very very satisfied. Well, I, I know for a fact he's been offered some jobs that are coveted mm -hmm. uh, across the country but uh, you're right he just he understands being happy. He's got three daughters his wife's from the Tulsa area so a lot of factors uh, when he's made those decisions. Tough shot for Henderson and Thomas stuck his rear end in and tripped up Conley as he goes flying out of bounds. 
Well, listen to this right here, Dave. Just leaves his feet. That's what you call boxing out. <laughs> well, he knows how to do that. <laughs> Just glad he didn't hand, land on that hip bone. Mm -hmm. Will Roberts right now, Dave, doing a much better job containing on the perimeter. Early in the game, they were a step slow. Oklahoma taking advantage. Whether it be a perimeter player, we saw Tayshawn Thomas get all the way to the rim. Mm -hmm. now Conley's going to stay in there with two fouls. Will Roberts going zone on this underneath out of bounds possession. Healed. Well, you don't want to leave him open too often. I mean, he can just get hot and look out. Well, he hadn't been shooting it great as of late, but the last thing you want to do is him to have a freebie. And a tough play here for Conley. Seventh turnover for Oral Roberts. Lon Cougar saying to Buddy Heald, all right, I like the shot, but something else you did I didn't like so much. This will take as the Sooners go up 10. Well, here's Buddy Heald in Oklahoma leading 24 to 14 with Brendan Manzer. I'm Dave Armstrong. Brendan, you were a shooter. When you went into a shooting slump, how do you get out of that? Well, you, you shoot in, until you get hot. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I was, I was just a shooter, but Buddy Heald, way more than that. I think one thing you have to do is, you have, number one, you have to have a short memory, much like a defensive back. I mean, mm. you're a shooter, you're a shooter. But what, I, what he did early in this game, the first bucket he scored drove it down the lane and finished with strength. That's yes. one way to do it. Another way with those guys that have a, that ability, which is him, get yourself to the foul line. Spotting up for three. That's his second three in this game. And now he has 11 points, Dave, on just five field goal attempts. He's been to the line. He scored driving to the basket. And now his last two are threes. And so certainly feeling in a flow. And what I have liked about him struggling a bit from the perimeter, only shooting 36% coming in this game, is it hasn't affected his effort defensively. And what he does on the glass is a big rebounding guard. Mm -hmm. Well, it's even worse than that for Heald. I mean, he started off first year, he was 7 for 7 in the first game. Since then, just 26% from three-point range. Might have found it again, though, today, 2 for 3 so far. He has the last eight points for OU. Cousins. So as Heald warms up, Cousins cools down. <laughs> nice kiss off the glass by Bilberry. Good body control. Yeah, and good patience as they push the ball up the floor. And that's what Bilberry can do. He's a physical guard. Can absorb a little contact and still finish, as you saw right there. Thomas pretty much getting any shot he wants yeah, right now. Yeah, and they're, they're protecting against the perimeter of Oklahoma and leaving those bigs. Oral Roberts are defensively by themselves. Here ball right into the lap of Thomas. Heald pulls up for a long two, and that was way off target. The Cousins, I should say, and then Heald with a rebound, and he misses a bunny. Well, Oklahoma. Got a little sloppy on their last couple possessions. And a whistle and a foul on Thomas. This Sunday afternoon on ESPNU, Wesley Saunders will lead a very dangerous Harvard team. I've seen them earlier this year. Tommy Amaker doing a terrific job with Harvard. And they'll take on Virginia, who is ranked number six in the country and number one in the RPI. Harvard, number six, Virginia. Sunday at noon on ESPNU, all part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. You see all the teams that are ranked. The ACC has six. The Big 12, half of their teams are ranked. And, and three others, Dave, in the Big 12 receiving votes. Baylor, Oklahoma State, two of those. TCU, who's 10 and 0. Yeah, 10 for the first time in their history, TCU. Where, where are you going to get a win on the road this year in the yeah, Big 12? Yeah, right? good luck. I was telling somebody the other day about TCU. I mean, they're not going to finish. 
in the upper half of the Big 12. But they, there will be a couple of upper half finishing teams that go to uh, Fort Worth and get beat. And it's going to be a, a grind in the 18 game round rock. Mm -hmm. No, he checked that time by heel. He misses off the heel. Throw it inside and Spangler picks off that pass. Oh, pass inside to Bennett and he wasn't looking. DJ Bennett was looking up at the rim expecting a rebound instead. And you keep waiting for Oklahoma to really bust this open Dave, especially with all Roberts now with eight turnovers. They've got to use this as an opportunity to settle down at both ends of the floor just down nine under five left. You have a chance to keep this game close going into halftime despite not playing very well. Brendan those eight turnovers you talked about have turned into 12 points a travel before the shot. So 12 points for OU off those turnovers by Oral Roberts and now nine turnovers and then you can take it a step further 20 paint points for Oklahoma you know, part of that is in the half court set and part of that the ability to get it off the rim on quick shots or those turnovers and push the ball in transition and score if you're Oklahoma. Such a different half for ORU as compared to the second half of last night's game against Missouri State. Man, they went on a roll. 19-0 at one point, 35 to 4 run in the second half. You're gonna you win a lot of ball games with that kind of run. Good block by Connolly inside. And a good rotation right there. Megano might have gotten a piece too. Yeah, good help right there. That was more Sutton-esque defense right there, help oriented. Kicked out. Noel Roberts making the move back to the Summit League after mm -hmm. being in the Southland Conference for a couple years. Spent many, many years in the Summit. But returning back, really more geographically comfortable, suits their recruiting areas, Kansas City area in particular. There's a bump by Bilberry. That's five team fouls on ORU this half. I like that Oklahoma the last couple of possessions not necessarily sh overly sharp but they've tried to drive the basketball They're not scoring sometimes you just need a little ball movement like right there get to the paint there you go nice soft touch by Spangler and obviously a team coached by a Sutton is going to be defensive oriented but Owen Roberts I just think that their legs a little bit dead third game in four nights. Mm -hmm. I think of your Oklahoma it'd behoove you to move the ball some and then just attack. Kid they really like Albert Owens a freshman from Texas. Continued to emerge. Got a chance to be really good particularly if they're uh, in their conference. Cousins. That's a three. <laughs> You see him talking to himself right there. Yeah. He missed a couple earlier. He thought he should have hit, but he made good there. Tipped up and over the glass. So we've got a timeout with 317 remaining, and Oklahoma is rolling. 32 20 our score as the Sooners continue to pound it inside and score when they go outside as well. All right, let's watch Mr. Spangler go to work. But sometimes, Dave, like I said, all it takes is a little ball movement. Notice the spacing from Oklahoma, and it, it's not just their guards that can take you off the bounce. Here's a little pick, a little pop, an overcommit by Conley on the closeout that allows Spangler to get to the rim. And you remember last year you had Cam Clark at the four, Spangler at the five. So they basically had four guards around Spangler. Now they'll do more, some more true high-low type action with he and Thomas but they can still go to spacing because Spangler and Thomas are skilled enough to face up and attack the rim. So let me ask you if Conley doesn't overplay Spangler knows exactly what he's going to do. If he overplays I'm going to drive it in. If he doesn't then I'm going to kick it back yeah, out. He's, or do he's something going to move the ball and go, go away yeah. and screen or going to go down and repost. Spangler is an intelligent decision maker on the offensive end. Yeah he is. Yeah, and there's a nice shot from Albert Owens showing some range. You know, Oral Roberts 
despite the fact that OU has really played well this half, they're still only trailing by 10. Well, the way they're going to close out this half in a positive manner is this end right here with defensive stops. How about Spangler's three pointers this year? He's seven for 11. Wow. After last year, taking 11 all year and hitting three. And it's, it's not an accident that, uh, number one, he's taking more. And number two, that he's knocking some down. He's worked very hard in the offseason on his jump shot. Shot from the wing, no good from Walker. Word has it blocked. D.J. Bennett gets up above the rim. Last time we showed Ryan Spangler a little pick and pop and then he drove the basketball here. He uses it in its true form as you we just talked about Dave. Intelligent decision maker nobody there. Finds a three point line and it always looks good when it goes in. Well, right? How do you stop him then if, if he can do that and then drive on you as well. How do you stop it. Well you have guys in the Big 12 conference that are more athletic type fours that are used to defending out there and have that capability. I mean, that's. It's a lot of defensive work to get all of that done and, and keep Spangler from uh, getting a shot that he wants. One on three for work, so he wisely pulls it back out. Whistle and a timeout taken by Scott Sutton, the lose it or use it timeout. Actually, it's his second timeout used this half, so it wasn't the use it or lose it timeout. I think they got Megano is wincing over there holding his left left leg. I think Jerry Pollard called official timeout. Yeah, to that, get him, that to shouldn't get him be out. a charge doing that against ORU. And they give it back to him. So that wasn't a charge timeout to Oral Roberts. Remember a Megano coming off that knee injury from a year ago or he missed all but four games. Good move by Owens right there. Just didn't get it to go. Spengler already with six rebounds in this game to go along with nine points. Oklahoma chance to kind of bust this open a touch heading at halftime. They're gonna get a couple more offensive possessions. Woodard. That's gotta feel good to him. That's not a three. He's only one for 17 from three-point range this year, but any shot that goes for him right now has got to feel great. Yeah, I think he struggled a little bit with confidence, but I still love the fact, Dave, that he's such a good driver of the ball and, and getting himself to the foul line. He's continued to do that despite not shooting it great. Put it again. Not this time, poked out of bounds, goes off Bennett, and it will belong to the Golden Eagles. Coach Kruger didn't didn't like that one right there. Just friendly discussion with David Hall. Shot clock is turned off. If you don't have a Megano in there, he's got Bill Berry. They got the ball in his hands and we'll free him up with the ball screen right here. One four flat. Good dish and a better block. At the buzzer, count it for Booker. Well, you talk about time management by Walker. Great patience right here. Didn't panic. The ball was shot early enough. Here's Woodard, kick. That's classic penetrating pitch and he got it off in plenty of time. That's what Booker does. He's a spot up shooter. No better time than to shoot that tray than in transition when your body is moving naturally towards the rim. Here's another look. Look at Woodard. Does it panic? Come set. Penetrate kick. Bucket. Great execution. They're looking at it again to make sure it was a three. They called it a three initially and now the officials have huddled at the monitor to see if that was a two or a three. His foot was very, very close to that line. So they're looking at different angles right now and 
seeing if uh, perhaps when, you know, usually three-point shooters, they know exactly where they are on the court, but I think maybe his, the front toe of his right sneaker might have been touching that line. Well, either way, great execution, obviously, and the patience and the timing that you mentioned, but a really good way to end the half. And you had an Oral Roberts team that wasn't playing great, but was still kind of hanging around, and Oklahoma, five quick points. So they determined that he did have a toe on the line, and they call it a two-point shot, but still right. great time management, again, by Woodard to get it to Booker. ORU is just really roughed up in that first half, and Oklahoma ran away. They lead it 39-24. After the break, we'll take you to the studio for the ESPNU Halftime Report. are right back at it again as they have a six and two record this year team that finished second in the Big 12 a season ago and one of many contenders for the Big 12 championship this year Oklahoma right now looking good against Oral Roberts 39 24 our halftime score ORU with the ball first well, Oral Roberts needs to execute well right here Dave I and mean, whether they make the shot or not they need to come out and look sharp a block by Thomas. So it was a good inside look for Henderson, but he was stuffed. And then Henderson comes down and pokes it out of bounds. Yeah, good execution. Got it in a great spot near the rim, but just an excellent defensive play from Ryan Spangler. And what you're hoping for if you're Scott Sutton is a series of defensive stops to start this second half to Give yourself a chance to maybe get back into it. Three pointer. Good. Well, ever since the Golden Eagles went into that zone, the Sooners have gone outside. In fact, 19 of their last 21 points have come from outside the paint, whereas 22 of their first 23 came inside the paint. And right there, you've got an Isaiah Cousins who's playing with a lot of confidence, not to mention, Dave, against that zone, Cousins at Legit 6-4. Can see over the top of that zone and feel comfortable shooting that jumper right there. Got another turnover for ORU. That's 11 for them this game. Easy pull-up jumper for Tayshaun Thomas. We were talking to Coach Kruger yesterday. And we were discussing the many ways that their offense could potentially pose problems. All five of these guys on the floor are capable scorers. Henderson has to step back from the short corner. And I don't mean capable that can hit a shot every once in a while. I mean guys that can go for 20 mm -hmm. on any given night. Tough to guard that, isn't it? Spangler tries another three, and there's Thomas. Oh, wow. Yeah, too easy right there. So Tayshawn Thomas in double figures with 14 points. And OU enjoying their biggest lead of the game. When you have that many scores, Dave, it just it keeps everybody honest. And you can't hide weak defenders. Spangler is going to have a double-double tonight before this night is over. Woodard. Still can't find the range from three-point land. Cousins, a little shy, he'll bring it back out. Well, Woodard continues to struggle from long range. He got good ball movement from Spanger at the top. I'd love to see Jordan Woodard do what he does best, like he is right here, and drive it. And pass it. Yeah, absolutely. Shot's not falling from three-point range. That's okay, do what you do best. So Scott Sutton forced to take a timeout with OU continuing to roll. We'll have more holiday hoops presented by K Jewelers in a moment. With Brendan Manzer, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're seeing uh, two really good friends, brothers, Scott and Sean Sutton. And 
You're like a part of the family, Brendan, I feel, when you look at the uh, coaching tree that starts with Eddie Sutton. Well, obviously, uh, Coach Sutton, one of the all-time greats mm -hmm. in college basketball, learned his basketball from a pretty good source in Mr. Henry Iba. Was that one two national championships at Oklahoma and a and m and then Sean Sutton obviously been a head coach at Oklahoma State been a terrific addition to Scott his uh, knowledge of the game and uh, gosh he gives great detailed scouting reports and preparation and then Scott successful head coach here at Oral Roberts for 16 years and you mind if I kind of tie it in with Lon Kruger just a little bit. And you talked yeah, about Mr. Iba, mm -hmm. and of course Jack Hartman played at Oklahoma A&M back for Mr. Iba in the day, and then of course Jack Hartman was Lon Kruger's coach. And Mr. Iba is responsible for most of our help defensive principles that we have in the game of basketball mm -hmm. today. And that's uh, when you mentioned Lon Kruger saying Coach Hartman was tough on him in practices. Uh, he came by it honestly because he was in the practices with. Mr. Iva, Jack Hartman, I'm talking about mm -hmm. as a collegiate player. It's good for Sean, too, to be back with his brother, isn't it? I mean, uh, just gives him a great comfort. And Sean's had some opportunities to go elsewhere as well, but he said the opportunity just isn't right, and he feels comfortable sitting alongside his brother. But obviously, there's great trust there. Sean, uh, with his head coaching experience, and was a great ex assistant to Coach Eddie Sutton for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Helped Oklahoma State go to two Final Fours in 95 and also in 04. It's your teammate, Sean, and a good teammate. S Scott Scott and I were teammates at Oklahoma State. You and Scott State. were teammates. Mm -hmm. And then now Sean, uh, his first year as an assistant at Oklahoma State would have been my senior year. There you go. In Stillwater. And Eddie now living in Tulsa, there, so he gets to go to all the ORU games. They're all there. He's got all his grandkids in Tulsa. Steve, his oldest son, who is the smartest of the group because he's a banker. He doesn't coach. <laughs> Eddie, was, Eddie may have long since turned off the TV on this one. Uh, he's not happy, and his, his boys are not happy at all. And this is, I think, just a classic case of the Golden Eagles kind of running out of gas. Yeah, it was going to be a tough assignment anyway. But uh, again, three games and four nights against good opponents. Beat a New Mexico State team that has been the last three NCAA tournaments. Missouri State's had good ball clubs over the years. They won that game. So they're, they are a half step slow, I think, with that question. But credit Oklahoma. They've gotten after the Golden Eagles. New Mexico State. Sean Sutton was telling us today he's the, they're really a good team. They're without a couple of players right now, but they are really, really good. A guy named Daniel Mullins, who's the preseason WAC player of the year. He's out with a broken finger for another three or four weeks. When they get him back, New Mexico State uh, will definitely be the favorite to win the WAC. And you can see them tomorrow night here on ESPNU as they take on the Baylor Bears. Well, Oklahoma with an 11-2 run to blow this one wide open, 50 to 26. And a block, I'm, I'm a smother by Thomas. And then that kind of hustle. Oh, you will lose the possession, but you talk about great hustle by Tayshawn Thomas. As Lon Kruger huddles his group, Oklahoma with a commanding lead, 50 to 26, and they have outscored. ORU 11 to 2 this half and the hustle they're getting even from the big fella. Well, you love Thomas right there. Up 24 but yet still giving great effort. Like when he dove for the basketball. They landed on that right wrist. You see him come up. Holding it. Trainer Alex Brown's checking him out over there. Hopefully that he is OK. But you love the hustle and the effort. Mm. From the senior right there. there. There's a guy that's had had a really good three year career at Houston. Averaged about 14 and eight and a half rebounds in his three years there. But no NCAA tournaments. An opportunity obviously to come here and play for one of the best teams in the country and maybe the best conference in the country. Well right now it's ranked number one in the RPI. Coming out firing Darian Harris. Healed. Uh oh. This is a warning to everyone else around the country. Buddy Healed is getting hot. 
three of four from three point range. And as he ran the lane down the right side, Dave, he was talking to Woodard the whole time because he was behind him, communicating that, <laughs> hey, slow up, I'm coming. And Woodard uh, makes the nice pass to Heald. And then Heald, the dish ahead to Spangler. So again, healed with a steal, the look ahead, and that's how quickly the Sooners can get on you. I mean, their transition from defense to offense is amazing. And look at the run they're on. And it's not just the guards in healed, a Cousins, a Jordan Woodard. Is that their bigs can run the floor? Here's the outlet. This is the one where Hill was talking and flowed behind him right there. He gave him the outlet, ran a great lane. <laughs> then here's the steal. And what I was getting ready to mention was look how Spangler runs the floor well. Tayshawn Thomas runs the floor well. So they can get the ball off the rim, get it to the middle of the floor, and fill lanes quickly. 18 points now for OU off 13 turnovers by the Golden Eagles. And that one rattles home for Kadeem Latin. Kadeem Latin has a lot of upside. They're excited about this young man from Houston. And we mentioned how much Thomas's eligibility, Dave, obviously helped Oklahoma. But it helped Latin because mm -hmm. that gives him an opportunity to grow into this level versus being needed right up front to play 16, 18, 20 minutes. But I like him. Yesterday was the first time I'd seen him in person in practice. Mm -hmm. He moves great. He Athletic, does move great. He's long. He's going to get bigger, stronger. No question about that. You know, when you first look at him, you think he's a junior college transfer, not a freshman. And he has that kind of body and movement. His mom, of course, Monica Lamb, was a three-time WNBA champion with Houston with the Comets. Well, he's got a chance to be good, and he can slowly grow because you have two proven bigs in Thomas and Spangler that can carry the load. And he, he can come in and learn from them, and I promise you by season's end, he will be uh, that much better than he is right now. Three-point shot rings home for Darian Harris. Harris, a redshirt freshman from Springdale, Arkansas, and that three matches his career high. So he's hit one up to that this point. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying, Dave? Yeah. Looker forced that one. This is good. Some, maybe he can get into some flow and gain some confidence mm -hmm. in a tough situation for Oral Roberts being down 28. Walker goes down hard. I heard it. Boy, Walker ran into a pick near midcourt. Watch here. That's his second and the team's third. Yeah, that's Brandon Conley setting the screen. And that's Latin's man. And that's that's one of the things that you have to learn at this level. You have to communicate defensively. Walker had no idea that Conley was there to set the screen. See, here he is. Conley sets the screen. Nothing malicious. That's solid. But Latin has got to communicate. Tell Walker, hey, screen, go behind, some kind of communication and avoid those type of situations. Yeah, for Dinjel Walker, that's just, he runs into a blind spot there and he runs into Brandon Conley. And without the communication from Kadeem Latin, Walker takes a pretty good blow to that right shoulder. And a foul on Conley. So he set an illegal pick. So Conley will come over to the bench. A disgruntled ORU bench right now. I think they felt like they would come in here and play much better than they did, especially considering the second half they had last night against Missouri yeah, State. They've they played well here over the last couple of days. And uh, you get an opportunity to go to an in state school that's one of the better teams in the country and see how you can do, where you stand. And they have not uh, performed great. 
Certainly not indicative of how well they're capable of playing. Latin looks up. Cousins. Boy, when he turned, he moved from point A to point B in a heartbeat. Now, Isaiah Cousins is smooth right there. And you saw how quickly Oklahoma can get from the defensive end into offensive transition. What a block by Latin. He's everywhere right now. Now Mankin. And that'll be a blocking foul, which will send Mankin to the line when we come back. 11.36 remaining, 22 to 5, this half for the Sooners. Wow. With Brendan Manzer, I'm Dave Armstrong, and now with the uh, heat pack and ice pack. I'm not sure, is that heat or ice? Anyway. Yeah. Walker is feeling a little bit of pain in that right shoulder. Aren't you supposed to alternate them? Okay, so that's what they're doing. I'm going to well, say that's heat. I believe that's heat. Hopefully, hopefully he is he is okay, and it's just a, li a little stinger. Probably going to be sore tomorrow. And when he looks at the tape, he's going to be sore at Kadeem Latin. <laughs> well, Mankin <laughs> gets them both to go. By the way, for Mankin, first points of the year. Oklahoma's gotten out and run, obviously, Dave. But defensively, what they had to do to make sure that uh, Will Roberts didn't feel like they had a chance for the upset was to contain Bill Berry and Omegano. And they have done that. Yeah, those two combined for about 32 points a game. Omegano has yet to score. He hasn't even attempted a shot this half. Yeah, Bill Berry has six. Yeah, I mean he's he has been shut down to say the least. I think he is. He's in the game right now, but I don't think he'll be in much longer. I think Megano again you know, coming off that knee injury. They want to make sure they don't do something foolish. They play again at Memphis next. Well, he's a good player. I mean, there's there's no question. I saw him against. Tulsa in their season opener. He had 26 that night. A couple of days later, Oral Roberts goes up to Missouri. He has 30 at Missouri. And in both those games, Dave, he was the best player on the floor. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy that uh, frustrating evening here tonight. Oklahoma's done a great job defensively. You know, it was interesting in talking with Scott Sutton today. He said, I kind of messed up with the Megano against Missouri. So they he was in one of those unconscious moments in the first half and they couldn't stop him and he said he got two fouls and so I took him out you know and he said he's a smart kid he's the kind of kid who could play with two fouls but I took him out and he said he got some more points in the second half but it never got back to that flurry he said in that first half he was unstoppable and if I had to do it again and you don't coaches don't get mulligans but if he said oh, I had to do it again I would have left him in there he is with the good effort on the boards but you know most coaches or many I should say including Scott Sutton will have a rule if you get if you get two early fouls they're going to sit right. you and, you know, and, then, and then from there you've got to kind of feel your way through the half as a coach but he'll have plenty of 20 plus point games as the season progresses mm -hmm. and they'll need him because they'll they'll have a great opportunity to win the Summit League and get to an NCAA tournament. Woodard. Good to see him knock down a couple shots mm -hmm. here tonight. He's best at, he's really best 17 feet and in day. You know, little mid range game. Gets to the rim, gets himself to the foul line. He was great at that last year. Yeah, that was the thing last year. He got himself to that free throw line where he is deadly, 86% free throw shooter. And he's not doing that as much this year. He's settling more for the outside shot. I think that will come. I mean, he's a guy, though, that he had nine assists the other day against mm -hmm. Tulsa. So he doesn't need to score. But when he does score, it just makes OU that much better. Yeah, and he, and he, he of those starting five, is probably going to not score as much as the others. But as we said earlier, 
any one of those guys can pop you for 20, and that keeps every defender that you're playing honest. By the way, Albert Owens now with that jump shot, he's going to a new career high with nine points here tonight. Well, he's played by far the best of the interior bigs for Earl Roberts, Owens has. Bill Burry, stolen away. What a good play by Woodard. And a nice lay-in at the other end. Boy, great hands right there. Now, Bill Berry made a mistake. You don't want to turn. You get it that deep, you don't ever want to turn your back. Oh, that's a charge if ever there was one. This was like just a bull coming in. And then look at the other way. Well, that tells you right there that Bill Berry is not in it like he normally is because he usually invites the contact and loves to take it straight to the rim absorb that hit and try to finish he turned his back in transition right there and as soon as he did there's Jordan Woodard for two of 26 points off turnovers for Oklahoma 26 to two yeah. the advantage I mean some of that is oh are you running out of gas some of it too is just talent on the part of OU. Bennett. <laughs> Terrific save in the corner too. Latin showing you his agile nature right there. A good finish from Bennett. Good strong move. Tack the rim. No double figures now for Albert Owens. He's got 11. Silver lining would be a good performance from a young freshman like Owens against uh, a, a team of this caliber. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he wants his team to play better and have a chance to win, but he should leave feeling confident here tonight. It's a little face up from Bennett right there. Yeah. I think that lid is off the basket for just about everybody right now at Oklahoma. And a foul this time on Bennett, which will send Albert Owens to the line. But OU is pulling away systematically. And they're doing it with great hustle here tonight. The Sooners with a huge lead over the Golden Eagles. You look at some news and notes from the Big 12. And the Big 12 right now, the number one rated conference in the RPI. And that should hold true as they go into conference play and on into the NCAA tournament. TCU off to the best start they've ever had. And a lot of people say, well, they haven't played anybody. They have. They've, they've had some really good wins. And West Virginia's only loss was a home loss at the buzzer. TCU preseason pick ninth in the Big 12 Conference. West Virginia sixth. So if that's your ninth and sixth best teams, I think that's all you need to know. And, and right or wrong, Dave, you know this, you build your reputation as a conference in non-conference play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it'd be hard to argue that uh, Big 12 is not the uh, deepest in terms of the quality of its depth in the entire country. That's that's really an easy one. Yeah, top to bottom, there's just no weak teams, not one in the Big 12. Look at a team even like Oklahoma State, who plays Middle Tennessee after our game here today. You got LeBron Nash, Phil Forte, Michael Cobbins, and Anthony Hickey in your preseason pick date, and that could happen, but. You and I will see Oklahoma State on a Sunday against Maryland. Mark Turgeon comes back into this Midwest to, to bring his Maryland Terrapins in, and we'll, we'll get to see them on Sunday. Good basketball team, good test for Oklahoma State. And I know you and I both are excited to see that uh, he has a good team out there. Mark mm -hmm. Turgeon enjoyed him when he was at A&M, and they were in the Big 12 Conference. Mm -hmm. So they come in. That's a two o'clock start, two o'clock Eastern on Sunday here on ESPNU. Tipped out, last touched by Isaiah Cousins. It'll stay with ORU. Well, Cousins continues to improve. You know, offensively, his progression, particularly in terms of shooting the basketball, he had trouble his freshman year getting shots to fall. Proved last year about 40% from three. Is he quicker this year? I think he just looks like a half step quicker than he was last year. 
I, I think that's because you and I are both a year old. That's why. That's, <laughs> that's why he looks. He looks quicker. He does. Look know, quick. he's, he's smooth. I mean, he, he is, and he has quietly, in a way, played off of Buddy Hill. Bobby Ward gets one to go. Few and far between though for the Golden Eagles. We've been talking a lot about how ORU had to play last night at home and then took the bus ride up the turnpike from east to west and uh, got in here about midnight last night. And we're saying, well, what, why would you schedule a game on a Monday night prior to a Tuesday night at Oklahoma? Well, they didn't schedule it that way. They had to do it that way because of a power outage. In a previous game, they were supposed to play Missouri State earlier in the year. Close, supposed to play that game on December 7th, mm -hmm. which was last Sunday. They had the power outage in South Tulsa, so, so they couldn't play the game. Had to reschedule. And that's the only gap that they can find to get it done. Obviously, non-conference play is winding down. Just a couple of weeks away from January. Poked out here by Cousins. So as you watch this Golden Eagle team as they get ready for Summit League play. By the way, they're picked sixth in the Summit League this year. I think they might make some noise, though. They've got some really good talent. I saw Omaha last week. They're also in the Summit League, and you know, I say, and I think Omaha is picked in that fifth, sixth range as well. And I think uh, Scott Sutton's Golden Eagles team can do some damage in the Summit. It's a good league, though. Well, I don't think it's North any Dakota State. South Dakota State's had some some mm -hmm. good ball clubs over the last couple of years, but it, this team is a lot better than what they've showed tonight. I just I just think you're playing a really good team. Third game in four nights. They've got two high-level scores in the Summit League. Bill Berry and Omegano are two of the top, probably five or six players in that league. Mm -hmm. You see what Albert Owens is doing tonight, the freshman as a big man. He, he's starting to come on a little bit. Point guard play is real important for them, Dave. They've, they've kind of struggled finding really who that is going to be consistently. Aaron Young's played better as of late, but they will definitely challenge for the, the league title. Shot clock is down to two. Cousins at the buzzer. Wow. Everything's going right for OU tonight. That was not a good possession. Bailed out by a three by Cousins. We mentioned he was 8 of 11 from three point range the last two games coming into tonight. The games against Missouri and Tulsa. So he's been shooting it well as of late. Three of six tonight. Healed waiting for it with CJ Cole back to heel. Nice lob pass from Cole. Well, Heald's been productive. He's gotten a lot of ways. That's an easy one right there. Did you notice how well Oklahoma shares it this year today? I mean, it's in the half court. It doesn't stick. In transition, they advance the ball well up the floor with the pass instead mm -hmm. of you know dribbling the basketball to advance it. Much quicker to pass it. Yeah, they have 17 assists on 35 field goals in this game. Hard to get some some assists though because a lot of their field goals have come off turnovers. Yeah, easy transition right. lay-ins off off turnovers. Word. And that goes off of the sneaker of Albert Owens and gonna go to OU when we come back. Everything's going OU's way. And a flurry to the finish for the Sooners. They have a huge lead over the Golden Eagles. So Oklahoma leading it 80 to 42 with four guys in double figures for the Sooners. And Isaiah Cousins having himself another good night. Well, he's doing it both ends of the floor, Dave. Defense right there, the run through. That was in the first half when Oklahoma was trying to separate themselves from Oral Roberts. Been shooting it great from three point range. Eight of 11 the last two games coming into tonight. Three got, of six. Got three of six here tonight. You see the athleticism. He's smooth. 
6 4 athletic. I've mentioned it several times, Dave. He has progressed each and every year here at Oklahoma under Lon Kruger. And, and a reason that this perimeter for the Sooners, when you throw in Buddy Heald, explosive score, Jordan Woodard, who's a more than adequate point guard, is a perimeter that uh, is up there with the best in the country. We're on a throw for Fran Frischilla, who made the trip up from his home in Dallas, and his son, James Frischilla, is now a senior. He's getting a chance to play here in the last two and a half minutes. There's number 13, James Frischilla, and his dad, Fran, on hand here. Of course, Fran will be working again many games throughout the country on ESPN, and you'll see his fine work. But he was so excited to get a chance, said, you know, I'm undefeated as a coach again this year. It's great, and <laughs> chance for him to come up and see James Frischilla, his son. Well, we see Fran doing all his great work on ESPN. We forget that he's also a father. Easy drive to up by 35 mm -hmm. to get there. He is his coach. We were talking earlier today. His other son plays at Harvard University, and uh, he got a start against Florida Atlantic earlier this year. Some of it was the reason, and and his son knew. That Tommy Amaker was upset because Harvard had just lost, and so he started all the walk-ons and guys that had never started before. And so Fran's other son got a chance to play for Harvard and actually scored the last points of that game against Florida Atlantic. And Harvard's been on a roll of late. Well, obviously Matt got his intellect from his mother. We know that, right? <laughs> right? And now what a, what a great opportunity. Now Harvard going to Virginia. Mm -hmm. To yeah. play Tony Bennett. God, I, I love the way he coaches Tony Bennett. Mm -hmm. Love the defense. I mean they're not just good defensively. They're excellent. He teaches and they play the right way. And it helps when you have good players too. <laughs> For Shella with an assist. And Trey Slate with a three pointer. Three point answer, no yeah, good from Weber. One of those evenings. Another assist, no. Well, long three by Bobby Word. So he's in double figures. In fact, the leading score for ORU tonight for the second straight night. Word with 13 in this game. A left handed hook that won't go for Cole. Another three pointer by Word. Yeah, he, yeah, he can do that. He's, he's one of those guys that once you knock down one or two, he can really get, get rolling. Harper. Whoops. Harper still hasn't scored this year. Neither has Priscilla. Another three. That's three in a row for Word. Feels a little bit like a rec center game right now. Yeah, yeah. Shots going up quick. A little bit. Three point line to three point <laughs> line. The only difference is they're actually both running up and down the court. At a rec center game, there's usually one guy standing just down at one end. <laughs> That, more, that would be me. Yeah, a little more snowboarding, right? That's right. Shot clock is down to two. They're not even going to take a shot. And the game will come to a close with Oklahoma dominating Oral Roberts 85-53. Dominant from the beginning, from the onset. I don't know if we expected a 32 point victory for Oklahoma, but we did expect them to play well. I love what they did defensive early, defensively early on War Roberts' two scores, and Bill Berry and Omegano shut both those guys down, which is what the scouting report was to do, and it allowed them, Dave, to really get out and run in transition. Use their athleticism, those big guards and those fours and fives, Spangler and Thomas in particular, to get out and run the floor and do something that they are accustomed to and good at doing. So four in double figures for the Sooners here today. Buddy Heald 
really had a good shooting day. Thomas got the thing started for Oklahoma in fine fashion and a double-double from Ryan Spangler. We'll talk with Coach Kruger when we return with Oklahoma winning by 32. We can do that right here. And Oklahoma wins this one big, 85 to 53, never a doubt. The Sooners just ambushed the Golden Eagles right from the opening tip and never look back as Oklahoma has four guys in double figures led by Buddy Heald who scored 16 tonight, 14 more for Thomas and 13 each for Cousins and Spangler who wound up with a double-double. Spangler had 13 points and 10 rebounds. And now let's get you to Brendan Manzer with the coach, Lon Kruger. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, coach, we were talking off air. I said, what did you like? And you said everything. It, it was steady. So so, what did you like most? Well, I, I don't know about the everything part, but the steady part. You know, I didn't think there were too many lulls in the action, uh, too many stretches where we didn't get decent shots. Uh, we were really talking a lot about valuing a possession, getting a good look every time down, and turn the ball over six times in a pretty high-paced game. So we liked that part of it. You've emphasized defense in a big way this year. As we talked yesterday, you, you spoke to me about how hard you guys worked on the preseason. It was evident tonight, 30 points off turnovers. Uh, what did you like most about your team defensively? I thought our guys did a good job of getting to the ball. Our big guys, uh, especially uh, Ryan and Tayshawn, have a real good feel for helping on ball screens. And uh, when the ball's going to the bucket, not too many clear path opportunities. Uh, we worked hard on that. The guys have done a good job responding. Buddy Hill. Of course, you get the victory in Tulsa on Saturday, which you'll take. And, and I guess the good news is you do it with Buddy shooting 4 17 from the floor, just 11 points. Tonight, effective 6 of 10 from the floor. Uh, got an early bucket where he drove it, got fouled, seemed to get him going. Uh, what was different about Buddy Heald's game tonight? Hey, Buddy's going to make shots. Uh, you know, he didn't make them on Saturday, but uh, that's not our biggest concern, Buddy making shots, because he's worked so hard at it. Uh, all he needs to do is just. Uh, Keep shooting, you know, and uh, you know, be a little bit more selective sometimes. But uh, for the most part, uh, like Buddy's attack, liked his uh, you know, shot selection tonight. And when he does that, he'll shoot ball well. Before uh, we talk to Buddy, let, let me ask you about the upcoming game against Washington. Lorenzo Romar's done a great job this year. It'll be another challenge for your team. Um, have you been able to see much of Washington? And what do you expect on uh, Saturday? I really haven't seen uh, any at all. Uh, I know Lorenzo's teams always are well prepared, well disciplined. They're going to cover you like crazy. Uh, uh, they're undefeated. So at this point in the season, you know they're, they're playing good basketball. And our guys will look forward to that challenge. Coach, thank you as always. Thanks, Brendan. Thank right, you. Let's get Buddy and Buddy Heald in here. Buddy. Hey, first of all, congratulations thank on you. your game. Thank I was just you. talking to Coach Kruger about Saturday in Tulsa. And, and yeah. people are talking how you're struggling a little bit from the field, only shooting 36%. Yes, but we all knew. There was a game coming when you you would bust out yes, six of ten from the floor tonight. You were terrific on the offensive end. Yes, what did you see against their their defense that opened up some opportunities? You know, you know, I just let the game come to me. You know, coach let the game come to me, and I was just uh, rushing for the past couple of games. And uh, I was down in the Bahamas. You know, I had a couple of bad games, but uh, you know, my teammates took me and coaches took me, and uh, I keep in touch. I got a lot of extra shots, and uh, today, you know, I take my time and I knock down some open up open shots. Obviously, scouting reports each and every night are going to concentrate on you yes, because of your reputation and and uh, and what you've done in the past and the player that you have become. Um, knowing that, how do you prepare for each game when you know you're going to get opposing teams' best defensive effort? Oh, uh, you know, just, just stay poised. You know, I got to stay humble and uh, just you know let the game come to me. Like always, you know, the, like I said, I was rushing it. You know, I just trying to be rushing the score. I feel like I had to put the, uh, score so quick, but uh, you know, the coach just said me let the game come to me and I uh, just. Give what the decent defense give me, and I was able to step up, step up and knock down open shots today. Buddy, one of the things that's obvious about your team this year is defensively. I, th I think much improved from from last year. Yes, we sir. know you spent a lot of time in the the preseason preparing for that. Good pressure up front. You guys get 30 points off turnovers. Yes, sir. How much was that emphasized in terms of coming out against Oral Roberts, who had two very good offensive guards that you shut down? How much was that emphasized coming into this game? Oh, it was emphasized a lot. You know, Coach Kruger, you know, from the, from the beginning, uh, this, uh, after the Missouri game and after the Tulsa game, he said, oh, I've got two good guards. We got to shut down. And, uh, you know, we was able to contain them. You know, the big toughers down low, they got good guys that can post up. And uh, we was able to contain them and uh, make them shoot tough shots. And, uh, you know, Tayshawn and Ryan do a good job, you know, helping us on the, on the block. And uh, we were successful like, on that end. You guys have already played a challenging schedule. You went to the battle for Atlantis, got to the championship finals against Wisconsin, went on the road to, to Creighton in a tough environment. Challenge, you're going to challenge yourselves again on a Saturday in Las Vegas against Washington, uh, a team that's 
playing very, very well. They have good guards. Yes, sir. How do you get prepared for that one? Uh, you know, stick with uh, stick with our model. You know, we can get after their guards. You know, uh, you know, uh, Williams Goss is a good guard. You know, we're gonna stick after him, and uh, you know, they got a lot of good players around him. So we're just gonna be ready and we can physical game, and uh, you know, we're going there to win the game, uh, basketball game. The size is big as or not. You know, we everybody think it's fun, but uh, we're going to handle our business first. Buddy, thank you. I always enjoy right, it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tayshawn Thomas. We'll follow Buddy Hill here. And, and Tayshawn, back-to-back um, -back really good offensive games for you. You had 25 on 9 of 12 shooting Saturday against Tulsa. You were terrific here tonight. It looks like that your teammates are getting you more involved. The offense is going through you more, getting, whether it's touches inside or, or at the high post or where it may be. Um, how much has that occurred in practice and allowed you to uh, transcend it over into basketball games? Uh, it was kind of... It was happening a lot in practice, but I wasn't talking that much on the court. So it was like the teammates told me, if you don't call for it, I'm not going to give it to you. So I had to get, be more vocal on the offensive end to get the ball more. And Coach been stressing a lot to the teammates to get us the ball. So they helped out a lot. You seem comfortable, uh, obviously, with your back to the basket, but also on the, on the perimeter. You guys had great spacing tonight. And you, along with Ryan Spangler, your cohort inside, were able to get some good spacing on the floor and attack the rim. Is that something that you're looking to do, maybe take a, a, another big who doesn't have quite the quickness that you do off the dribble and, and attack the paint? Uh, yeah, I like to have, look at my game like I have an advantage, like either down low or with my quickness. So I, and I can just pick whatever one I want to use. So today it was kind of, I kind of had uh, points where I can do both. So that's why I was just taking what they gave me. Ryan Spangler really carried the load last year for this Oklahoma team in the interior, particularly uh, on the glass. He has uh, been noted as saying, I sure am glad Tayshawn Thomas is here, is here. What do you like most about playing alongside him as you guys um, work together in the interior? It's just another person that's just going to work hard every night, you know, and just he pushes me, I push him, we make each other better. And then, like, it's always a competition between us, and I feel like that makes us better on the court. Like, in practice, we'll argue whoever gets the most rebounds and talk trash to each other in the locker room. So that helping out, that's helping us out a lot. He's beating me right now, so i got to catch him. <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, you don't find out about whether you're eligible to compete this season or not until the night before your first game. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that was like. And obviously, uh, when it was announced that you're good to go, you're excited. But uh, how nervous were you, or, or did you have any anxiety coming up to that point? It was one of those. It just felt like it was like the longest process I ever had to do, go through. Uh, like not finding out to the day before. Like So I didn't think I was going to play the day before. So when Coach called me at like 9 o'clock the night before, it was like, are you serious? Like I got cleared. And it was just, I just thought it was going to happen like earlier in the day. But when I got the call, I hung, after I got on the phone with Coach, I just called my mom. and. She went crazy, and my dad, and just called everybody that was close to me and let them know. Well, congratulations on the way you were playing, and I, I know that uh, your teammates and Coach Kruger are glad that that worked out, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, good luck. All right. All right, Dave, we'll send it back over to you, sir. All right, thanks a lot, Brendan. Uh, boy, good efforts by all those guys that you were talking to. Uh, certainly Buddy Heal with those 16 points on 6 of 10 shooting, 3 of 5 from three-point range. And then you add that with the production they got out of Thomas with 14 points and 13 each from Spangler and Cousins. And Lon Kruger had an easy day of coaching today as his team wins it 85 to 53. We'll come back to Norman in just a moment.